Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna go ahead and get back to work on these projects since it's in the garage. We'll start back on this 2011 uh, Polaris Razor. And then in between, I am gonna do a little bit of work on my 63 Fairlane. So to get you caught up to date on this Razor, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've done to this point. So I've redone everything on the front end. I had to put some new bushings on the radiator. I redone the control arms or the A-arms up with the new bushings. I sanded them, repainted them. I took the sway bar off, put a shorter bolt, put a new tie rod. I had to put a new uh, a new steering system here. The, the old one was cracked. Got new ball joints. I redone the hubs, put new bearings. I had to put new rotors, new brake calipers. And I, right now I've got the uh, brake lines temporarily hooked up because I need to bleed the system. I am leaking out some diff fluid on that seal. I need to do some more research on it. So let me show you some of the old parts. Now, I got this, I got this side by side. I traded uh, almost like new Honda 420 Rancher and a rifle for it. I did test drive it. It, uh, it drove all right. I see it needed some work, but it definitely needed more work than what I thought. This is the belt that was supposed to be brand new. You can see it's missing a section there. It's uh, it's actually broke. So definitely was not needing, it was not a new belt. I was told it needed brakes. So you can see this was hyper extended all the way out. And that is because, let's see if I can find the, what the brakes was. Of course, here was the rotor. You can see these were in awesome shape. And that is because, oh yeah, here's the brake. That was the brake pad. There was nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, got those changed. Of course, the tie rods. It's all typical maintenance stuff you do on a razor. But nothing was done there. I had to cut off the control arm bolts because they weren't, they were stuck inside the metal shafts. It was all, it was all pretty bad. But everything on the front's brand new. I just need to, I'm clearing out the brake system. I'm going to flush it because it had some sand in it, of course, from riding. But new belt. I've got a whole new fluids tune-up kit for it that I gotta put on, but first, I'm gonna go ahead and take this bed off and start on the rear. So on the rear, I've got everything new again. I've got the bushings I'm gonna be replacing, bearings, brakes. I'll have to see about the calipers if they're, if they're gonna be shot. And then I've got some parts and I'm gonna build a custom exhaust system. So I'm not sure if I'll do it on this one or make it a separate video all itself, but I'm gonna get rid of that big muffler and just come out with a little muffler. It's actually right there in the box. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started and get this bed off first. I got all the bolts out to get this rear bed off. So you got four in the middle and then you got these on the outside, which I had to go under and take the nuts off those because previous owners got them all jacked up, half in there, bent. I unhooked the lights, took out these four bolts, and then up front, you have four bolts here. Upon taking it off, I've also discovered that the cage bolts, one's missing, one's broke off, so you got one holding here and of course this piece right here. And this is bent. So that explains the doors I got with it. The driver's side being completely smashed, which I'm gonna repair. But that will let the bed come off. If you've ever wondered how the bed of an 800 comes off, there you go. I'm sure it's similar for other models. So let's get that lifted off there. And then we'll proceed to what has to be removed next. So this is a look at what the razor looks like with the bed off. Had a little metal heat shield plate that came off. Also had to unhook, I just unhooked the harness. 
and left the tail lights and all the wiring in there. So if you've ever wondered what the snorkel looks like or the air intake, this goes to your belt, this flat piece, this comes up underneath the bed. And then your air intakes on this side. And then inside here is another uh, belt breather hose that goes down here. Might as well, while I'm in here, go ahead and just build some type of snorkel kit. What do you say? Do something a little different, a little custom. I know a lot of people do it, but heck, I'm in this far. Why not keep going? Cage is off. Pretty simple, three bolts. Broke another one. I've broken so many bolts on this thing. It's ridiculous. Also, the exhaust isn't too hard to get off. Just one clamp here and you can take it right out of this holder. Problem is, still haven't figured out a way to twist it around to get it out. But we'll cross that bridge because I'm going to take off most of this suspension. So that means I'm going to take one of these loose, which at that point I can get it out. Well, let's keep going. This ain't going to finish itself. Rear tires are off. The back calipers might be salvageable. They didn't wear them plumb down to where the actual pads are missing. As far as the bearings, can't really tell you because there's so much control arm play and the bushings being wore out. There's this other side. Same, it's actually worse. They gave an axle for this side because it's busted. So that should be a job, but caliper may be able to be saved. Let's go ahead and get all this taken down. I'm going, what I'm gonna do is take one side completely apart, probably this driver's side, and get everything off of it, see where I stand. Get things cleaned up and then I'll move over to the passenger side. All right, this side's completely off. If you've never looked, worked on a razor before, they're really one of the simplest things I've ever worked on. There is not much to it. So once, as you've seen on this other side, I'll show you. To get the assembly off, once you got the main nut off in the center, you'll take the two caliper bolts off, one here, one at the bottom. Those are 13 millimeter. That lets, and you've got the hose and hook, that lets the caliper come off and then this assembly will slide off. And then from that point, these bolts here and here will let the hub come off. Then you can take these bolts, that'll take the spring off. Then this big bolt lets the top A-arm come off. And then these two bolts here and here let the lower A-arm come off. And they're all 15 millimeter. Uh, the other side came off pretty easy. I only had to get the persuader out for one of them. The rest of them, the Harbor Freight Chicago Electric Impact made light work of them. So I'm going to clean up this other side and get all these parts rounded up and then just go ahead and take this side apart and work on them simultaneously. So the other side came out fairly easy. I even took the axle out and believe it or not, I just pulled on it really hard and it came out. I know I've seen posts and videos of people get that piece stuck in there and never get it out. They beat it and pull it. They do a lot to get it, but, <laughs> but luckily mine just came out. So I also got the muffler out and uh, ended up to get it out. I had to cut it. So custom exhaust is a definite go now. You can see there, just cut it off right there at the, at the bend and it came right out. So I'll have to go to my local parts store take that the muffler with me that uh, is right there, take this piece and do some pipe matching. But that'll be in another video. So right now before I put all this back together, I am going to clean up, get some things organized. I'm going to go get my eight mil, break his bleeder loose. My eight mil, break this bleeder loose and press this piston back in to make sure these calipers are still good. And if that's the case, they're still good. 
I'll have to take these bolts loose, which kind of look to be, let's see what size they are. Maybe. Grab the wrong socket. 14 millimeter. Let's go get the rotor off the hub. Then I'll pull these bushings out, which that one just fell out. Pull these bushings out. Then I got to get that O-ring out, heat this hub, and press that bearing out. Right now I've got the new bearings in the freezer chilling out. So I do that so they'll press in easier. I usually, I'll heat this hub just a little bit where it is aluminum and it'll expand out, but I don't get it red hot because sometimes when you put the bearing in and it's ice cold like that and that's red hot, they will expand fast and could potentially ruin the bearing, bust it. I've had it happen to me before. So I'm going to get cleaned up, get all this swept up and get my work area back to being nice and clean. All right, so a little progress made here. I got all the metal shafts out of all the control arms. These are crucial to how everything works and rides inside those bushings. So what I'll do with those, I will throw them into my bolt tumbler and let them clean up real nice and get all the rust off of them. As far as the control arms go, I will wire brush those in here and get them the best I can. And then, and same with those and the hubs. And then I'll raise the garage door, go outside and pressure wash them, get them ready to paint. I'm just holding off because right now my air conditioning garage, it's about 75. When I went out earlier, it was 100 degrees here in the great state of West Virginia. So a little tip I wanted to show on these hubs right here. They have a big uh, snap ring. You want to take care of not bending this because you got to reuse it. But what I always do is I wire brush in here with uh, just a hand brush, just a little guy, get it cleaned up. And then I'll take a flathead screwdriver and peck the ring around to get it moving to make sure it's not seized up. And then use my snap ring pliers and a flathead to get it out. Uh, these things can be really tough really tough to get back in but that's the method i've always used and it works pretty good i'm going to get that hub the snap ring off it and i'm going to heat them and beat the bearing out of them uh they make press tools and there's bearing presses and all that stuff i wish i had but i don't so i'll show you my method when i get to it So what I'm going to do now is just heat all around this housing, get them nice and warm. And then I've got a socket that fits down over the inside of the bearing. And I'll take and just hammer it down until it hits flat. And then I'll move it over to the vice grip to the truck itself. And then line it up to where the bearing can pass through between those two grippers. If you had a press, this would be a whole lot easier. Take a whole lot less effort but I don't have one, so always when I go to yard sales and auctions, I look for large three-quarter sockets. These make great, great uh, bearing presses to get bearings out. I don't beat them back in. I'll actually use the uh, device to get most of them back in, but I'm just going to do some heating around, and then I'll get this one knocked out. I'll show you the end result. All right, so the bearing's out. Like I said, it comes out through the front. You can see a little bit of marring where I had it resting on the the uh, grippers of the vise, but bearing come right out. So we're gonna do that to the other side next. Then this stuff is ready for wire brush and some cleaning up, and then some paint. So let's get to it. All right, so we went ahead and moved to the calipers. I ended up using the vise to squeeze the piston back in. I just used the brake pad. Let's see if we can get a shot of it here. I just used the brake pad against the piston, the old brake pad, and clamped it in like so. 
crank the vise in while keeping this catching the fluid in the back both the pistons went in easy so that means these calipers are still good now the only thing left is clean these up and put the new pads on of course you don't have to take these pins out the pads come right off off these pins get one side released here yeah but you can hear they're falling off so I'm gonna clean those up with everything else. There you go. And get everything ready for some matte back black paint. And then walk out this cage and some other pieces out to the trailer where I've been keeping all the pieces until I'm ready to put them together. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so I got all the parts wire wheeled. I'm gonna get them out there and get them pressure washed and degreased and let them dry in the sun. I went ahead and cleaned out the tumbler. I gotta take it out and wash the rock out get some degreaser back in it and we'll go ahead and take these extra parts out that I don't need in the garage at the moment and toss away some of the ones that I won't be using anymore let's go ahead and get these out here and get them washed all right guys so here's where I keep all the uh RZR parts out here on the trailer believe it or not all these go back on to the razor a lot of work to be done so this is where I ended up I've got all these pieces wire brushed and then degreased and I'll go let them dry overnight then I'll come back and I'll hit them with a scotch white pad again get them cleaned up and then hit them with some degreaser then get them ready for paint but as far as in here I got to get cleaned up still yet from doing all the wire brushing as you can see my table and everything's a mess but right there's how the razor looks at the end of today's build I went ahead and replaced this hose up top when I was at the parts store getting exhaust pieces that I'll show you in another video. I went ahead and got these hoses and I went ahead and got all these breather hoses because when I build the snorkel, I will run them up with the snorkel. But that is how she looks. Doesn't look much like a razor. Alright guys, so I'll close out this video. Thanks for watching. It is hotter than the seven hub of Hades in here. You can see I'm sweating bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this garage cleaned up. I gotta work tomorrow, but check back on the video when we get the paint in those parts and getting them back on. And then you'll have to check the other video with the custom exhaust build. So like and subscribe. Thank you guys. And let's get building.